What is the reason for miracles? What is the reason for miracles? The reason for miracles is to give a signboard to an eventual event. So, Isaac was a miracle, but Isaac was not the promise. Isaac was a miracle, but Isaac was not the promise. Isaac was a miracle, that's why a miracle is called a sign. He is a sign or a miracle is a sign of a future event. So the birth of Isaac was a miracle. Abraham being able to conceive at that age was a miracle. Man was dead. It was a miracle. Was it not a miracle? So which means just like Abraham was able to have children even after being pronounced dead. God is going to raise sons from the dead. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. That Abraham, after being pronounced dead, produced a child, was a sign that the children of God will be brought from the dead. Jesus, the first begotten from the dead. The church came out of the dead. And from the dead, he has brought many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. For both he that sanctified and they that are sanctified are all of one. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. He had quickened us together, raised us up together, made us sit together with him, where? In the heavenlies far above all principalities and powers. So just like Abraham had a child from a dead body, God produces children from the resurrection from the dead. So which means Abraham, Sarah, the conception of Isaac was the message of dead burial resurrection and the production of children being communicated to Abraham by God in typology. So, Isaac is the miracle. Christ is the promise. Isaac is the miracle. Christ is the promise in his resurrection. Abraham is a miracle. God is the promised father. Abraham is the miracle. God is the promised father. So, the miracle is never the end. The miracle is the means to show the end. The miracle is the means to show you the end. The end is always beyond the miracle. The end is always beyond the miracle. You know, Abraham too had assumption. Abraham said, Lord, can it be Eliezer? Will the seed be Eliezer? Then Ishmael came. Will it be Ishmael? Then Isaac came. She said the seed must be Isaac. Then when they got to Mount Moriah, it became clear that the seed is not Isaac. Isaac is put on the altar and God said, take him out. There's a ram. It will not be him. On the mount it shall be seen. What you are carrying is not the seed. But when you get to the mount, it shall be seen. And when they got on the mount, it was seen. That Isaac cannot be the seed. There is a seed tied that will die in the place of Isaac. So take Isaac out. Let that seed die. Abraham saw my days. So in that communication was the message of death, burial, and resurrection. Adam and Eve had assumptions. Abraham too had assumptions because, you know, all of them had the promise of God and they were searching for where it will come to pass. They were all diligently seeking and inquiring to see where this will come to pass. Look at Genesis 17 verse 1. The Lord appeared to Abraham, Genesis 71. When Abraham was 90 years old and 9, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the almighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect. Verse 2. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. Verse 3. And Abraham fell on his face. And God talked with him saying, so if I say my covenant is with you, what does he mean? It means I am going to walk through you. Abraham, I will walk through you. What is covenant? I'm going to do this through you. I'm going to do what I want to do through you. So let me ask you questions as I close. When he says father of many nations, who is going to walk out that father of many nations? 
God. Through who? Abraham. So who is the father of many nations? God. What is Abraham? The one that God partners with to do it. So God's promise is a covenant. Covenant became Abraham because Abraham is not going to do anything. All Abraham will do is believe. And then God will walk through Abraham by faith to fulfill what God will do. So who is the father of many nations? God. Through who? Abraham. Now, God through Abraham. So if God will use Abraham, it therefore means that God will walk through Abraham's culture. Because Abraham can only understand God's communication within the confines of his environment that is used to. And since God has decided to walk through a man, it means therefore that God will use man's vocabulary to communicate with man and work out his plan through man. For I delivered unto you first of all that which was delivered unto me. How that? Christ died for our sins according which scriptures? Is it getting clear? And that he was buried and that he rose again according which scriptures? You see where the scriptures that brother Paul establish his theology from he took it from abraham the deadness of sarah's womb and how that out of the dead isaac was born out of the death of christ the new man is born so the new creation realities of abraham of, of paul came from the teaching lesson of abraham isaac hagar sarah Ishmael, that whole thing is where Abraham got his theology on death, burial, and resurrection. He didn't get it from the death of Christ. He got it from the scriptures, which was validated by the practical death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Why? Because the scriptures are one. The scriptures are not two. When you look at it, everything synchronizes as one. Somebody shout hallelujah. 